Welcome to this video tutorial about the integration of a TLB4 multi-channel weight transmitter into an EtherCAT network managed by an Omron PLC. An Omron PLC model NJ301 and a TLB4 EtherCAT instrument compose the setup used. The Sysmax Studio software is used for project development and management version 1.25, realized and distributed by Omron. The required documentation for the integration procedure is composed by TLB4 protocols manual and the ESI file specific for the TLB4 EtherCAT model. All the documentation is available for Laumas customers on the pages of Laumas website dedicated to the proposed electronic instruments. Now we can switch to the Sysmax Studio interface where a project is already open. After the access to the configuration and setup section and double click on the EtherCAT item, a window opens showing the current structure of the defined EtherCAT network. At the moment only the PLC is defined which will act as a network master. Accessory operation for include the TLB4 instrument into the network is the import of the TLB4 ESI file into the Sysmax Studio catalog. To do it from the EtherCAT view, right click on the PLC icon and click on the display ESI library item. A window opens showing all the devices currently included in the catalog. At the bottom of the window, the instructions to include new devices are reported. Specifically, click on the highlighted link and uh, copy the TLB4 ESI file into this folder. The import procedure completes with the Sysmax Studio reboot. After the reboot and the project opening, the TLB4 object is available into the toolbox. Drag the instrument symbol into the EtherCAD view to include it into uh, our network. Once available in the EtherCAD view, click on the TLB4 symbol to access to a series of setup parameters by a tab open inside it. It is possible to set the name used as instrument identifier in the PLC software and the address used by the PLC as instrument identifier in the physical EtherCAT network. In this project, the address is set to 2. To obtain a correct working of the EtherCAT network, it's an accessory the address assigned to the physical objects in the network is the same used in the PLC project. To correctly execute the assignment, a couple of preliminary tests are required. The PLC has to be powered on and connected to the PC where Sysmax Studio is installed by a USB cable and in this case the TLB4 instrument has to be powered on and connected to the PLC EtherCAT port. To proceed click on the specific icon to switch to the online mode then right click on the PLC symbol and the write slave node address. A window opens showing all the devices recognized as connected to the PLC EtherCAT port. The TLB4 is in the list but with the current address value equal to 1. Set this parameter 
to the correct value, 2, and uh, click on Write. A warning signal, uh, the instrument reboot is an accessory to complete the assignment. The synchronization is uh, the last step needed to obtain the correct communication between PLC and the instrument. Starting from the online mode, click on the specific icon. After a series of preliminary elaborations, a window opens showing the result of a compare executed between the project configuration and the currently loaded in the PLC. Click on transfer to controller to start the download of the project configuration in the PLC memory. Once the operation is concluded, access to the I.O. map window to verify the communication is correct. Expand the TLB4 EtherCAT tab to control the data currently exchanged with the PLC. For this control, the support of the TLB4 protocols manual is recommended. Among the information available in the EtherCAT section, the description of the exchange data structure is reported in a couple of tables. One, for the data transmitted by the instrument, and a second table for the received data by the instrument. In the transmitted data, the gross and net weight values are available. For both of them, the absolute value is uh, transmitted, including the decimals, but without the decimal point. The weight values assigned information is available in the status register bits. A specific table reports the meaning of um, each of the 16 bits forming this field. More specifically, uh, when equal to 1, uh, bit, uh, the bit 7 signals a negative value for the gross weight, while the bit 8 signals a negative value for the net weight. The other bits composing the status register signal a series of error condition. The stable weight condition uh, if a tear value is applied to the calculated weight and a displayed well, uh, weight value equal to zero. Uh, with all this information available, after returning to the Sysmac Studio interface, it's quite simple to, in, uh, simple to interpret the values displayed in the I.O. map window. The first four bytes of, uh, in the input section compose the gross weight current value, while the successive four bytes compose the net weight current value. At the moment, they are equal because no tear is applied by the instrument. Instead, these two bytes compose the status register. Translating this value in its binary equivalent, it's possible to capture the transmitted information. In this moment, both cross and the net weight are positive and stable. Analyzing the data received by the instrument during the communication is particularly useful to focus to the command register. Used to send numeric command codes associated to specific operations required to be executed by the instrument. 
Always referring to the protocols manual, a specific table lists all the common codes available. with the corresponding description of the associated operation for each one. As an example, it's possible to verify the working of this mechanism, exploiting the code 7, semi-automatic tear enabling, and 9, semi-automatic tear disabling. After coming back to the I.O. map window, identify the bytes composing the command register field among the output section and write the command code 7 in order to require to the instrument the semi-automatic tear enabling. The net value turns to 0 and the status register switch its value in order to signal uh, that a tear has been applied to the weight and that the current displayed uh, value is equal to zero. Now, writing the nine command code in the command register bytes, the semi-automatic tear is disabled and the gross and net weight are now equal again. With this test, the tutorial is complete. Thank you for attending it. See you.